the gorgeous sun-drenched world of Luca is overflowing with Pixar Easter eggs, from Pizza Planet trucks to Luxo balls, deep sea finding Nemo references and hat tips to up. Yippee Kai, movie lovers, I'm Jan and in this video I'm revealing over 80 Easter eggs and crucial details, plus the post credit scene you might have missed in Luca. Some mild spoilers ahead so take care. Italian food features heavily in Luca from the enormous sandwiches that town bully Ercole enjoys to the pasta eating section of the Porto Rosso Cup. However, Pixar's nod to its legendary Pizza Planet truck is much harder to find, so watch carefully during the final part of the bicycle race towards the end of the movie, and it appears very briefly just behind Ercole as he's chasing Luca and Alberto down the cobbled streets. Another tricky to spot regular Pixar Easter egg is the famous Luxo ball. Look out for the ball's signature yellow, red and blue colours during an aerial shot of the bicycle race. Another recurring Pixar Easter egg, A113, appears on the train ticket that Alberto gives to Luca so he can go to school in Genoa. The appearance of A113 in Pixar's films is a tribute to the classroom at California Institute of the Arts, where many of the studio's animators studied. And the number on the carriage that Luca boards, 1200 PA, is a reference to the address of Pixar's headquarters, 1200 Park Avenue, Emeryville. And the number on the front of the train, 94608, is the studio's zip code. Hidden in one of the signs for soft drinks in the town is a deep cut reference to one of Pixar's most beloved films, Up. This poster on a side street off the main square has an ad for a cherry flavoured drink, with various bottle caps on the right for other flavours. It's a little difficult to see, but the purple coloured cap is a nod to the grape soda pin that Ellie gave Carl when they were kids in Up. You and me, we're in a club now! The Art of Luca book shows a design was made for a bottle cap labelled Uva, the Italian word for grape, confirming this is indeed a reference to Up. During one of Luca's dream sequences, as he soars through the air on a Leonardo da Vinci flying machine, below him is the famous fictional wooden marionette, Pinocchio, together with the cat and fox from the original Italian book, which many decades later was adapted for Disney's animated movie. And there's another Pinocchio reference in the song Il Gatto e la Volpe, The Cat and the Fox, which plays as Alberto and Luca build another homemade Vespa. The Cat and the Fox references the two rogues from the story of Pinocchio, and director Enrico Casarosa chose the song not only for its playful and fun feel, but also because he sees similarities between Luca and Alberto and the Cat and the Fox, and how each pair gets into trouble together. There's also a Pinocchio figurine in Julia's bedroom, and the story of the famous wooden puppet who eventually becomes a real human boy also has some parallels with Luca's story, as he can transform from a sea monster into a human. Another intriguing Easter egg I spotted in Julia's bedroom is a record cover for an artist called Niccolò Pitera, a reference to Nick Pitera who's an animator for Pixar, and also one of the voices in the Triple Denk gum jingle from Inside Out. Triple Denk gum will make you smile. Yes, Nick Pitera also has his own YouTube channel where he covers numerous songs, including many from Disney's musicals and Remember Me from Pixar's Coco. In Julia's bedroom, there's a cute Donald Duck toy, and some of these cloud formations that appear in one of Luca's dream sequences look like hidden Mickeys. And another Disney reference springs up on one of the film posters in the town square, for the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the underwater adventure adapted from the book by Jules Verne. Verne was also briefly referenced in another Pixar creature feature, Monsters Inc., via a poster in a Parisian room that Mike, Sully and Boo fall into. There's also a fun fictional movie poster for a film called Attacco del Mostro Marino, Attack of the Sea Monster, which features a fearsome creature that looks a lot like Uncle Ugo. The poster has a hilarious B-movie vibe from the 50s to 60s era when Lucas set, and recalls films such as Attack of the Crab Monsters and Creature from the Black Lagoon. In contrast to the much more appealing look of Luca and Alberto's sea monsters, Uncle Ugo was designed to be as scary and weird looking as possible for a Disney film, so that Luca would dread the idea of having to go and live with him in the trench. Casa Rosa has said that Ugo is based on the very strange creatures found in the deep, and to me, with his bioluminescent lore, he looks like a cross between an angler fish, like the one we saw in Finding Nemo, and the barrel eye, another weird looking real life fish that has transparent flesh around its upper half so you can see inside it, similar to Uncle Ugo. By the way, in an interesting bit of casting, Ugo's voiced by Sasha Baron Cohen, perhaps best known for the Borat movies, and the odd tone he uses adds to the uncomfortable effect that Ugo has on Luca. Hello, Luca. Is there a nice tomorrow? 
Luca, I need you to punch his heart. Luca also tips his hat to Finding Nemo via the diving helmet both Alberto and Luca wear, which is the same design as the one in Philip Sherman's fish tank when Nemo ends up in his movie. Luca's filmmakers also had some fun with the surnames of the various sea monsters in the movie. So, Luca's name Paguro is Italian for hermit crab, reflecting his sheltered life at the beginning of the film and the reluctance of his parents to let him venture above the surface. On top of that, it also foreshadows how Luca will eventually come out of his shell and reveal his true self, as well as the fact that ultimately he'll be comfortable living in different surroundings than he grew up in. Alberto's surname Scorfano is Italian for scorpion fish, and the Branzino family who Luca's mum keeps mentioning get their name from the Italian word for sea bass. Let's see Bianca Branzino do that! And a hint to the secret that these two old ladies are actually sea monsters is their surname Aragosta, which is Italian for lobster. Oh, and I also like the little detail that the goat fish that Luca shepherds actually bleat just like a land goat. <laughs> Director Enrico Casarosa has a couple of voice cameos in Luca. He's the voice of the fisherman who sets up the film's stupido running joke when Alberto and Luca overhear him shouting to a speeding boat. What's wrong with you, stupido? He's also the card player who yells Scopa when he wins. For those unfamiliar, that's a popular card game played with an Italian deck of cards. You can see one of those designs close up on the card that Alberto tries to steal at the beginning of the movie and which Luca later finds. And the reverse of the the card with its picture of a town in the top half reflected in the lower half is a nice detail referencing the underwater civilization beneath the sea right by Porto Rosso. When Luca and Alberto meet Giulia's father Massimo for the first time, they discover he has a particularly keen interest in hunting sea monsters. The pictures pinned to his wall are a nod to the various legends that Pixar's filmmakers research for the movie, from old Renaissance maps to legends of Japanese dragons and serpents. One particular legend from the town of Talaro in the Liguria region tells of a giant octopus that one night climbed out of the sea and rang the church bells to warn the inhabitants of an attack by pirates. And in Luca, there are octopus doorknobs as well as an octopus plaque near the town square, which reference similar ones from the town of Talaro that pay tribute to the legendary octopus. And octopuses, with their ability to camouflage themselves and change the way they look, also inspired the filmmakers for how Luca's sea monsters could quickly transform into humans. True to Luca's nostalgic feel and setting, there are many Easter eggs to the Italian post-war golden age of cinema. There's the poster of La Strada, the Oscar-winning drama by Fellini, and the name of the boat Gelsomina is the name of the protagonist in that movie. Casa Rosa also took inspiration from another Fellini film, E. V. Toloni, for the final scene of Luca. The design of the train that arrives to take Luca away and how the scene is shot, with Luca looking back to Alberto who runs after him as the train departs, pays homage to the ending of Fellini's film. And if you are wondering what that black and white photo is that Alberto looks at just before he and Luca attempt their first ride down the island slope, it's of the lead actor Marcello Mastroianni from the Oscar-winning comedy drama Divorce Italian Style. And fun fact, Chiara, his daughter with actress Catherine Deneuve, lends her voice to Luca's mum for the film's French dubbed version. And another film starring Marcello Mastroianni also pops up in the movie. Appropriately enough, the film playing on the TV while Giulia and Luca are sneaking across the rooftops is the 1958 acclaimed Italian heist movie Big Deal on Madonna Street. Another poster is for the Oscar-winning Roman Holiday, a Hollywood romantic comedy set in Rome and starring Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn. Various signs in the town also pay homage to other acclaimed Italian artists. The Vicolo di Sica references the neorealist director Vittorio di Sica, who directed classics such as The Bicycle Thief. The Piazza Calvino is a nod to Italian writer Italo Calvino, and Giulia Massimo's surname Marco Valdo is a shout out to the name of a short story collection penned by Calvino and the bar Pitaluga may be a reference to the Italian film producer Stefano Pitaluga, who began his career as a cinema owner in Casarosa's hometown of Genoa. There's also what looks like a fake poster which translates as a summer to remember, so I think this poster is a fun reference to how this movie is the story of a summer that Luca, Alberto and Giulia will never forget. Prior to directing Luca, Enrico Casarosa was best known for his Oscar-nominated short film La Luna, and the frequent lunar imagery in this movie, together with Julia and Luca's fascination with astronomy, feel like a hat tip to the acclaimed short. Plus, Julia's father Massimo also has a similar character design and thick, heavy moustache as the father in the short film. 
and this boy drawing stars in the end credits is the boy from La Luna. An in-joke that some coffee lovers might have spotted is the bar sign La Tazza, referencing not only the popular Italian brand of coffee La Vazza, but also the fact that La Tazza means cup in Italian. And I couldn't help but chuckle at all the holy cheese variations that Julia comes up with whenever something surprises her. Santa Gorgonzola, Santa Mozzarella, Santa Ricotta, Santa Pecorino. Sure. For the animation style of Luca, Casarosa wanted to go with a more cartoonish, somewhat exaggerated look that took inspiration from both Looney Tunes and Miyazaki's films such as The Castle of Cagliostro. And you can see these influences in scenes such as where Alberto tries to ride his homemade Vespa for the first time and after it falls apart, he ends up running down the hill spinning his legs so fast that extra limbs appear, something you can also see in this scene from the castle of Cagliostro. And there's a Looney Tunes inspired moment when Luca's thrown off his bike after breaking suddenly and the halo of fish swimming around its head is a suitably aquatic take on the circling birdies effect often seen in cartoons. Interestingly, Porto Rosso is a mashup of the names of several towns on the northwest coast of Italy where Luca's director spent his own childhood. And according to Casarosa, a wonderful extra reason to name the town that was Miyazaki's film Porco Rosso. There are some intriguing comparisons between Luca and Disney's The Little Mermaid. Like Ariel, Luca wants to explore land-based life above the surface, and both are told not to go by their parents. Also like Ariel, Alberto collects objects from the human world, and both films have some amusing moments with forks, with the sea creatures not properly understanding their human use. And coincidentally, or perhaps not, Jacob Tremblay, who voices Luca, will also be the voice of Flounder in Disney's upcoming live-action version of The Little Mermaid. When you get to the end of the movie, make sure to sit through the credits as there's a humorous post credit scene which features the return of Uncle Ugo. This time he's back in his original habitat talking to what appears to be one of Luca's goatfish about how great it is to live in the deep. It's away from the hustle and bustle, all the stuff that you don't want. Ugo also eats a piece of whale carcass, a callback to how he described living in the deep earlier in the movie. Mm. Well, carcass. I'm curious to see how Luca fits in with the Pixar theory first put forward by John Negroni, who also has a YouTube channel. And that theory posits that after the events of Wally, animals evolved over time into the monsters from Monsters Inc. In Luca, we can see there's a species of sea creature in the 1950s that already has the ability to rapidly change into and out of human form. If you've got any ideas, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you want to find out how Pixar's previous movie Soul essentially confirmed many aspects of the Pixar our theory, tap here to watch my video on that or follow the link in the video description. And if, like me, you really enjoyed the gorgeous animation of Luca, you'll want to check out the Art of Luca book with amazing concept art from the movie. I'll add a link where you can get a copy in the description below. So what were your favourite moments and easter eggs in Luca? If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe, and you can tap left for my next Pixar video, or tap right for something else you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!